Do you trade the triangle patterns? So the triangle pattern is one of the most commonly used patterns out there, right? So whether you are Forex, stock, commodities, index, whatever, whatever kind of trader, triangle patterns is something that most traders talk about and a lot of them use it. So in this video, we are going to uncover them by running through back tests on Forex, on stocks, on crypto pairs to see whether or not does triangle patterns actually work. And if it is, how exactly do you use it and how do you monetize it? So all this in this video. You ready? Let's go. So triangle patterns, there are three kinds of triangle patterns, right? The, the main commonly known kind of triangle patterns are the symmetrical triangle, the ascending triangle, and the descending triangle. So a symmetrical triangle looks something like this, where the top is going down and the bottom is going up. So it looks like a symmetrical triangle, right? They are the same shape. They are in the same shape. So what this means is that a symmetrical triangle, let's say if the bottom, the prices are coming up from the bottom, right? When price reaches a symmetrical triangle, it can either continue its move upwards, that means it consolidates and then goes up, goes up. So usually what this means is that when price goes up, it cannot always goes up nonstop, right? It needs to take a rest. It, need, it needs to take a breather. Right, so this is what it's actually doing. It goes up, it takes a rest, it goes up, down, up, then it's kind of getting squeezed until it breaks, boom. Then it continues its move upwards, right? Or this could actually be a reversal, right? It goes up and then it goes sideways, it gets squeezed, and after that, boom, it breaks down and then it goes its way downwards. So it becomes a reversal. So try, that's the reason why triangle patterns is something that a lot of traders uh, have this on their mind every time they, when they see the chart. So it's clearly identified by just looking at the highs, right? The highs, the highs, the highs, right? And then the lows, the lows, the lows. So if you see that they're kind of like moving in the same direction, right? This way. So then that's where you can draw the trend line to join the highs and draw the trend line to join the lows. And that's where you can form the area of potential breakout, right? So eventually, once it gets squeezed, usually it does. Interestingly, this is how the market works. It always squeezes when, 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 when the triangles patterns are really, uh, are really defined and are really good. So you really get squeezed. It gets smaller and smaller until nearing to the end, it will just break, right? So this is symmetrical triangle. Ascending is whereby price, what happens is that price goes up, right? Then it comes down and test the top again, comes down and test again, right? So then the bottom, we can see all these lows. So then we can also draw it up like that. So an ascending triangle will look like this, right? The top is kind of flat and then the bottom is heading upwards. So it's, 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 it's something like this. So more likely than not, price came from the bottom. It formed an ascending triangle. More likely than not, it will just tend to break up and then shoot up. Note that I say more likely than not because it can also break down and then come down, right? This is ascending. So descending looks more like this when the market goes down, right? The market goes down, forms a low, right? Heads up. Test the low again, forms a lower high, heads down, test the low again, and so on. So for example, so then the trend line will may probably look something like this, right? Like this. So you will probably get squeeze, squeeze before boom, a break downwards. So this is a descending triangle where the bottom line is flat. The ascending triangle is the bottom line, the top line is flat. Symmetric, the symmetrical triangle is the top and the bottom line are in the in a in a in a triangular direction. So that's the reason why this is called triangle patterns, right? So how do we actually use it? 
So number one, does symmetrical ascending, uh, descending really matters? Uh, truth to be told, it doesn't, right? It doesn't. Because an ascending triangle, right? Ascending triangle can go up, right? Then it forms like an ascending triangle, right? Test, 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 right? But it can still break down. Although usually the market, the people in the market will say that, or you can see the articles around that, you will say that you'll break up. Usually it just can go either way. So all the descending can go upwards as well, rather than downwards. So it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you, you understand that price is in the consolidation and it's getting ready to break. Whether does it continue in the trend continuation, meaning that previously it went up, it goes consolidate and then it continues its way, or it can also be a trend reversal. So this is the key for you to know. Either way, it is a usage method. So how do we, when we run our test in this scenario, to test out triangle patterns, whether or not does it work, we have to set a clearly defined rule as in our entry point, our stop loss point, and our take profit target. So to define whether or not does this method in general actually work. So what we did is that the, if, let's say whatever triangle is, whether it's symmetrical ascending or descending, the moment when it breaks above, right? The moment when it breaks above, so for example, so what we do is we have an entry, right? Then this is our entry level, right? When it breaks up, when it is an entry level. So our stop loss would typically be the distance between the highs and the lows, right? The middle. Our stop loss would typically be the middle, okay? And then our take profit target, right? Our take profit target will be the distance from the high and the low to be equal, to be equal. So if let's say the distance from the high to the low is 100 pips, the distance from, from, the, from our take profit will be 100 pips upwards from here. So then this is our take profit level. So the risk reward ratio can be rather good because you're entering here to your stop loss list here, right? This is, your, this is now your entry. This is now your SL, your stop loss, and this is now your take profit. So the risk to reward ratio is fairly good for triangle patterns. So now this is our defined rule on how do we test it, right? So you ready? Yeah? Let me clear my screen. Okay, but before that, before that, right? I want to talk about the pros and the cons behind triangle patterns. So the pros of the triangular patterns is that it can show the direction of the market. So like I mentioned, if the market is going up and then after it forms a triangle, it can show which direction may it potentially go. Usually if it goes in that direction, it, it, it can be a trend reversal, it can be a trend continuation. So it shows the direction of the market after the break. Right, But the cons is that there are different ways to identify the risk involved. So what this means is that there could be forced breakout, right? Forced breakout. So for example, if this is a breakout, is the breakout line, price test, 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 when it breaks up, it can break up a little bit before coming back down. So there could be forced breakout, right? The next pros is that it may identify reversals, which is the key, right? A lot of times you want to know where is the highest point, where is the lowest point. So triangle, Triangle patterns is one of the ways to identify reversal, right? But the cons is that it's more than frequently subjective. Again, because of the false uh, breakout, sometimes you may say that, hey, this is a reversal. And then another trader say, no, it's not because of another reason, right? Another indicator is telling you otherwise. So it can be subjective, right? That is the reason why we're running this test, right? So the pros is that the rewards expected to be identified. So we, we, based on our, uh, it can have a clearly identified uh, entry to take profit level, right? Or where is the next rejection level? So the rewards are easily identified. Or it could be the next rejection level based on the support resistance level or whatsoever. So the, 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 the risk to reward ratio can be easily identified, right? And then lastly, it's easily, it's an easy strategy to apply and use. It's really simple, right? Just identify a triangle, go for the break. But of course, that's where we are going to do the test now. So in our test, right, what we did is that we run through our test for three 
different pairs. So we, we ran our tests for stocks, which we use Apple as a sample for testing. We ran our test for Forex, which we use Euro dollar. And then we ran the test for crypto, where we use Bitcoin to see whether or not uh, does triangle, pattern, triangle patterns work right in these different vehicles. And uh, if yes, which work better, so on and so forth. Right? So we ran our test through uh, one year of testing right, um, to come up with the rate. So for example, this in Apple itself, uh, we ran our test on a four-hour time frame. This is one triangle that we did. So can you, this is what triangle? This is what triangle. Lows, 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 and the highs is coming down. So the bottom is fairly flat, right? So this is the what? This is an ascending triangle, right? This is an ascending triangle. So price went up, came down, from an ascending triangle, boom, break. So what we have over here is that, say, this is the entry level, right? Stop loss, highs to the lows, the middle, Okay, take profit level, the distance from here. And then we double the same distance. So this is our take profit level. So price, this is our entry. This is our entry. This is our SL. This is our TP. As you can see, this straight workout, the risk reward ratio was fairly good, right? Almost close to one is to two risk reward ratio, right? So this is Apple, right? And then we ran our test for Bitcoin. So for example, Bitcoin, uh, there could be more times whereby uh, triangle, triangle patterns happen, right? So for example, in this scenario, price was going up. We, we saw that it's kind of getting squeezed a little bit, right? Kind of getting squeezed a little bit, some, something like this. So this is where, when you see price forms a high, and then it comes down, it forms a low, and then in the meanwhile price is getting squeezed, you can see if you want to draw a trend line. Obviously, uh, to form the triangle, obviously this is like not the best kind where it's very obvious, got high, got a low, got high, got a low, but those are textbook theory, right? In actual life, triangles look something like this, right? Where price is just forms a low, forms a high, forms a low, forms a high, kind of getting squeezed, and then finally, boom, it breaks. So in this scenario, what happens is that the, this closing was the entry. Stop loss is the distance from here to here, right? Half of it, right? And then take profit is from here, from distance from here. Let's say this is X number of pips. It goes down to here, right? This is our TP. So this is our entry. This is our TP. As you can see, this risk reward ratio was quite sick, right? Because this is at the entry, this is the stop loss, this is the TP, right? The distance from here to here is quite sick, right? So this is also another example where, you, where, we, where we saw that price is coming down and then the bottom, we can also draw a trend line. So this is more like a symmetrical triangle, right? Symmetrical triangle. So this is the entry, stop loss, distance from here to here, we cut in the middle and then take profit is from here to here. And then we, we measure the distance, right? Then you will probably somewhere here. Right, so this is the entry, this is a stop loss, this is the TP. Right, this is kind of how we test it out. Right, it may not be the best ways. Of course, there will be different. Um, if you have been trading a while, there could be like rejection areas and all this kind of thing. But we want to remove all this, the rest to, to give it a straightforward scenario, right? Straightforward scenario to test whether or not does it work. Right. And uh lastly, we ran our test on uh euro dollar. Right, the euro dollar, right, on the forex pair. So this is kind of like a triangle, right? Highs, highs, highs. So it's kind of dropping down, and then the lows, lows. So it's like the highs and the lows, right? And that's where same thing goes. And then this is like one smaller one where it went up. So triangle patterns. We ran through all these three, and here are our results. Okay. So the rules is that the entry after the breakout of the triangle, right? Uh, like how many times did it work? How many times did it not work, right? And as it only when the reward is one is to one from the height, that is what I just talked about. And then this is our backtesting range for one year, right? So we tested on Forex, Euro dollar, Apple and Bitcoin, each on a four hour chart. The win rate for Forex for Euro dollar is six out of 10. That's not too bad, 
right? That's not too bad. It's above a five win rate. So it kind of passed, right? It passed. Stock, uh, Apple is five out of 10, not bad. Bitcoin, it's eight out of 10. Meaning that after the break, usually it's the real deal, right? So there are lesser false breakout, right? For, for Bitcoin compared to uh, uh, Apple or compared to uh, Euro dollar. But either way, so the average risk reward ratio, so that's where I calculate, I show you how to calculate risk reward ratio, right? Entry to stop loss to take profit level. The average risk reward ratio for Euro dollar is two. Uh, Apple is 1.72, crypto is two. So we ran the test, six out of 10, six times 2.08, minus four losing trade of 1%. We, in terms of, we want to come out in terms of percentage, right? Out of 10 trades, how much? If you only risk 1% per trade, right? Did it actually turn out to be a winner? Yeah. So for you, for Euro dollar, if you traded 10 pairs with a risk of 1% per trade, 10 pairs, right? 1% per trade, just based on a triangle strategy, nothing else, we mean 8%, 8.48%. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. 10 trades only, 10 trades, right? Uh, Apple is 3.6%, not bad. Bitcoin was the winner at 14.24%, just 1% risk per trade. Obviously, uh, it depends on how much risk per trade do you normally do, but this is our sample test. So our verdict is that the triangle patterns give an overall profitable win rate of more than five right, throughout the different vehicles of trading, right, with an average risk real ratio of more than one is to 1.5, right, therefore making it a relatively consistent strategy. Furthermore, it emerged profitable with up to 14.24 uh, in terms of percentage gains, right, that's for Bitcoin. However, the entry point of the strategy and the risk identification can be subjective, right, making it a challenge for beginners to grasp, like how exactly to, to where do you draw a triangle, the entry point, but on top of that, the frequency of the occurrence of the triangles, right, is also an undetermined factor. Sometimes you could take a while to form a triangle pattern, right? It just doesn't happen that often. If it happens that often, it isn't that good, right? So it doesn't happen that frequently. So even so, it is a strategy that is heavily utilized by many when done so correctly. So it can be rather effective in your trading. So verdict for triangle patterns. We give it a 7 out of 10, meaning that you can add this to your trading. Uh, we will not say you to rely the triangle patterns entirely, totally. But if you did, based on our strategy, I'm not saying that it will guarantee work, but based on our small sample size of strategy, it did. Our uh, small sample size based on those three pairs, it did actually work. So there you go. This is our verdict for triangular patterns. So... I hope you like this video, we, uh, this video series. So we do this video series where we talk about all these different patterns, all these different indicators, and that's where we run our test through it to see whether or not does it actually work. Should you or should you not include this into your trading strategy, right? So I hope, really hope you like this video. If you do like it, give it a thumbs up, right? Do subscribe to our channel, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.